Hi, this is Brian Pogue. I am looking forward to participating in this symposium today. Um, my slides will talk about biomedical optics, the single largest technology sector in medicine today. I have three quick disclosures. Um, I'm president and co-founder of Dose Optics and Cal Imaging. Uh, one makes uh, Cherenkov imaging systems, one makes tissue phantoms and cell phone diagnostics, and then I'm editor-in-chief of journal Biomedical Optics. So in 2018, I did a um, market survey of market surveys uh, looking at the global markets for medical imaging technologies. And what I found was really interesting, that if you added up all of the optical fields, fields where optical systems are used, like in ophthalmics, endoscopy, microscopy, surgery, lasers, robotics, it adds up to about $73 billion. The total market for all of medical devices is uh, about $500 billion. A lot of that, though, is materials. Um, if you add up all of radiology, it's about $40 billion, and that includes X-ray, CT, ultrasound, MRI, PET, and even radiation therapy. So you come to the conclusion that optical technology as a, as a technology field is at least double the size, close to double the size of the radiological field. And I think this comes as a surprise to many people. And then you add in the issue, the growth in double digit growth in home and mobile health devices, which are largely optical devices. They certainly aren't radiologic devices. And, and you can easily see that optics is economically the largest single technology sector in medicine today. Another piece of this is if you look at the physician user base, and so in the U.S. there's about a million physicians. Um, you know, if you look at radiation oncology and radiology, those are the hardcore radiologic users. That's only about 5% of the physicians. Um, about 65% are almost exclusively optical device people, and about 30% use a little bit of both, optics and x-rays. And so you can clearly see that you know, optical devices penetrate 95% of the physicians, whereas radiologic systems really have a, a much smaller impact. And so, again, you know, the, the point of care technologies tend to be optics based. The reason we don't always recognize it is because of the enormous variation in different designs and economics of optical devices. You can go all the way from a $100 autoscopy system all the way up to a close to $10 million robotic surgery system and everything in between, you know, through ophthalmics, der dermatology, colonoscopy, uh, cystoscopy, colposcopy, endoscopy, bronchoscopy, um, up to laparoscopy and surgical microscopy. So, you know, the, we, we don't always recognize this as a singular field because it's permeated every field of interventional, certainly interventional um, optics, uh, interventional medicine, I should say. And I think also that people often think of biomedical optics as mi microscopes. You know, that's kind of the, the obvious thing to think about. But in fact, you know, if you think about it, the microscopic optics world is very small. Uh, they tend to buy very expensive microscopes. Um, but it's a limited user group. In, in comparison, macroscopic optics, the kind that the day-to-day -day physician uses in sort of point-of-care medicine, uh, these are larger type devices, highly differentiated, generally less expensive, but, you know, again, permeate throughout all of medicine.
And so as optical engineers, um, you know, I think a lot in work, we work a lot in how do we make um, better devices and, you know, what can an academic do to impact medicine? And so if you think about academic biomedical engineering uh, as compared to startup ventures, let's say, or small industry or large industry, um, you know, there's a couple obvious things to note, right? The, if you think about capital and manufacturing pipeline, it's much larger as you go towards the large industry. If you think about the team, the design capabilities, the regulatory access, they all get better as you go to large industry. So, you know, where do academics compete? Where do small venture companies compete? They, they compete in creativity and agility, and I think they compete in clinical access. You know, it's actually quite interesting that as you go to startup ventures or small industry, you, the clinical access kind of decreases a bit, really, but it's the large companies that can buy their way in, or it's the academics who can just collaborate for academic benefit that get clinical access. And so we have to think carefully about, you know, the, the strengths of academic biomedical engineering being creativity and agility and direct clinical access. And so, you know, this is the world that I think about is academic engineering being one part of it, uh, the medical world that has needs and looks at outcomes from trials being part of it, and then the industry world where you do R&D and product development. And, and a lot of academics just uh, focus on pushing technology to industry or to medicine and hoping it sticks. You know, a lot of uh, companies uh, directly Put product push their devices to the medical industry. A lot of medicine academics just looks at harvesting interesting technologies for medical needs. Um, you know, I think an appropriately designed creative biomedical engineering research group does this sort of embedded model where you uh, embed academic engineering into the medical world and embed industry within as a, as a part of that. And that's all built into the medical center. And that's what we've tried to do here at the Center for Imaging Medicine at Dartmouth. Um, but it's this embedded model that really uh, makes things work. So as part of that um, creative space where you have biomedical engineers, academics, and industry all in the same medical center, you need access to high technology. You need access to procedure-based physicians need weekly meetings, uh, you need biomedical engineering embedded in the medical center. And that's what we've tried to do here at Dartmouth and a number of, of course, major medical centers all over the world do this. Um, but this idea that you need an iterative, creative focus on um, coming up with problems, coming up with technologies and iteratively improving your concepts and your ideas uh, on a regular basis is really what's needed to make it work. So uh, that's my little quick snippet, Biomedical Optics, uh, single largest technology sector in medicine. I look forward to questions and, and be happy to talk about individual examples.